The ALAR sensor uh, is, is the identical technology to what you see in a traditional finger sensor. What's different is, is that it is a location that hadn't been considered before and nobody had made a sensor specifically designed for it. So it's important to know that there is a non-invasive, easily accessible, uh, readily applied alternative. And the reason the alternative sensor works is, is because you have a protected circulation. It's blood flow coming off of the carotid rather than off of some peripheral uh, blood vessel. There is a subset of patients who are on vasopressors, have low perfusion, uh, have peripheral vascular disease, in whom the digit sensor either only works intermittently or doesn't work at all. You get an indication if you set your monitor up properly as to the magnitude of the signal. The bigger the signal, the better what we refer to as the signal to noise ratio. And so in this case, his perfusion index, this is sort of a unitless number, is 2.4. We consider 0.3 or higher to be an adequate number. Ideally, you are over one, and I've seen this number as high as in the 20s. Generally, the number from the nose is much higher than it is from an extremity. And so that's an example of why it works so well here when it isn't working other places, because you simply have a bigger signal. An ALAR sensor has a, another benefit in that it has much less motion artifact. So if you think about how we live our lives, we're using our hands, our fingers, we're writing, we're eating, we're moving our hands around, whereas our nasal ALA moves very little. So I'm intentionally wearing two pulse oximeters, one on my finger, one on my nasal ala. And the idea behind this is to demonstrate the difference in the signal strength of the two locations as evident on a monitor when you look at the perfusion index. One way you can make that demonstration is to cause vasoconstriction in a clinical environment. This would be with vasopressors, it would be with low cardiac output states, it would be with extreme cold. I can duplicate that without chemicals by doing something called a cold presser test in which I would take my, my leg or an arm, put it in a bucket of cold water. That then stimulates the autonomic nervous system to vasoconstrict. And when, and when I do that, my foot in the cold water, my body vasoconstricts and it vasoconstricts the entire peripheral circulation, which is why the blood pressure goes up and why the perfusion index from the digital sensor goes down and the one from the nose is relatively protected. In the operating room where I spend most of my time, a patient with the arms tucked where you don't have access to the arms because of the surgical field and you get a dropout of the peripheral sensor either because it became disconnected or because the circulation changed. I have access to the head, I put a nasal ALAR probe in its place and I immediately have information again within literally within seconds. And patients in the burn unit where frequently you are completely bandaged from head to toe and often the hands are involved and so the fingers aren't eligible for a sampling site. That's an example of where a sensor is going to be on somebody for a long time because those are generally longer hospitalizations. So clinically, one of the things we're interested in is knowing at the first possible opportunity that there's been a change in the oxygen saturation. Obviously, the first place that change shows up is in the pulmonary veins, and then it has to get from there to wherever your pulse oximeter sensor is. And we know that it's a further distance from the heart to the fingertip than it is from the heart to the head, where a nasal ALAR sensor would be. What I would like to do now is to do a demonstration of breath holding. I'm actually going to exhale and then exhale further to get down to what's referred to as expiratory reserve volume. That causes a shunt, so mixed venous blood comes across very quickly and I can desaturate in less than a minute. Then I will take a breath. It will be obvious when I take a breath and, and you will then see on the screen both my digitally derived uh, saturation and the nasal ALAR derived saturation.
when the concept of an ALAR sensor is new to you, it's really a matter of understanding that it's the same technology, it's simply a location that hadn't been considered before and nobody had made a sensor specifically designed for it.